Hi, my name is Ellie Savitt. I'm the Washtenaw County Prosecuting Attorney. Uh, I went to elementary school here in Ann Arbor at the Hebrew Day School. Uh, then went to Tappan Middle School, Pioneer High School, and I went to college at Kalamazoo College where I played basketball, majored in political science and philosophy, which uh, requires you to read a lot of books uh, to learn about uh, our politics, our government, uh, and uh, what we should and shouldn't be doing. Uh, I started my career as an eighth grade uh, U.S. history teacher. I taught American history in the New York City Public Schools, and now I am the Washtenaw County Prosecuting Attorney. Uh, the prosecutor is the unit of government. It's the person that uh, makes the decision when police arrest somebody uh, about whether to charge that person with a crime uh, and with what uh, they should be charged. And also uh, we go into court and if somebody is accused of a crime, uh, we are trying to make sure that there are consequences and that there are appropriate accountability for what they did. So uh, I'm really thrilled to be reading some books that uh, are really meaningful today. Um, and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Today we're going to be reading Ishak, A Boy Who Loved Violin. And this is by Tracy Newman, pictures by Abigail Halpin. I'm really looking forward to reading this book uh, because my mother was and still is a cello teacher. Uh, my sister and my brother both played violin. I played the piano growing up. Uh, and my childhood was marked by the sounds of young children playing the cello, playing music in my mother's sunroom. So looking forward to reading this book. The Pearlman's tiny apartment seemed ordinary. A single room walk up with just one window looking out onto the traffic of downtown Tel Aviv and no bathroom of its own. Yet a little kitchen radio transformed this simple home. Graceful classical symphonies, lively klezmer folk tunes, soulful cantorial chants, Rich melodies and vibrant rhythms filled this home and the ears and soul of the littlest Pearlman, transforming baby Itzchak, too. When Itzchak listened to music, a vivid rainbow of colors appeared in his mind, hues from dark green to red to yellow. Music brought Itzchak intense joy and tears. Itzchak loved it. By three, Itzchak knew he wanted more. He had to make music. Young Itzchak had already chosen the instrument whose magical sound he loved best. He begged his parents for a violin. But for an immigrant family whose dinner was often a piece of watermelon and some bread, musical instruments were a luxury. Still, Itzchak pestered and pleaded. Finally, his parents bought him a toy violin. At first, little Ishak laughed with delight, but he quickly recognized that his violin didn't sound like the master violinists played. His music wasn't as clear as Jashka Heisfitz's, as intense as Isaac Stern's, or as enchanting as Ida Hendel's. Disappointing, Ishak gave it a whack and threw it under the bed. Then the unthinkable happened. Polio swept through Israel. Four-year-old Ishak became infected with this deadly disease. He lay hospitalized, fighting for his life. After a few weeks, the doctor announced that Ishak was going to live. But Ishak's body was weak. He couldn't move his arm or legs. At least he could go home. There were so many tasks to relearn. Raising his arms over his head, holding a book, grasping a pencil. The work was hard, slow, painful. Other four-year-olds might have given up. They might have said no. 
They might have stopped trying. But a steady melody played inside Itzchak, encouraging, energizing, empowering him. A year of stretching, strengthening, and straightening paid off. Itzchak could move his arms and hands again, but his legs remained paralyzed. Itzchak would always need crutches or braces to walk. Crutches or not, Itzchak didn't just sit in his room. His family moved to the suburbs, enabling Itzchak to get to school on his own. They chose an apartment without stairs, so Itzchak could move around easily. Crutches even helped his soccer game. To Itzchak, these adjustments were no big deal. When you're four years old, you get used to things very, very quickly. Running around the block, riding a bicycle, jumping off a diving board, all these ordinary things Itzchak would never be able to do. But Itzchak made an extraordinary choice. He didn't become sad or angry. He knew the melody inside him gave him a different gift. Music got in his ears, gave him goosebumps, sent a chill through his body. Recognizing his passion, Itzchak's parents brought him a new violin. Crutches meant Itzchak couldn't stand like most violinists. But Itzchak declared, I don't have to play it standing up. I can play it sitting down. A bigger challenge was his big fingers, fitting them into the small spaces between the strings. Still, he figured out where to place them. Itzchak began studying the violin with a strict and old-fashioned teacher. Do what I tell you. Don't ask any questions, she said. Itzchak had to practice for two or three hours every day. Making music filled Itzchak with joy. But practicing didn't. So Itzchak found some unusual ways to manage. Sometimes he would sneak outside, watching construction trucks pour concrete. Other times, he boing, boing, boinged his bow on the strings, only pretending to play. If his parents asked why the room was so quiet, Itzhak explained that he was perfecting a new method, practicing inside his head. Yet, young Itzhak developed exceptional skills, including his brilliantly bouncing spiccato, Vivid, varied, vibrato, speedy, staccato strokes, playful, pizzicato plucking, smooth, slow, legato. Itzhak's secret? He talked to the music, imagining the personality of the piece, what it looked like, what it felt, what it meant. His way of living, breathing, becoming the melody transformed his music into something extraordinary. At six, Itzhak was performing with orchestras in Israel. By the age of 10, he was giving solo performances. Itzhak's warmth, joy, and enthusiasm became well known. Some people doubted that a violinist could play well sitting down. Itzhak knew he could. Later, he explained, I can't walk very well, but I'm not on stage to do walking. I'm on the stage to play. Obstacles were ordinary things Itzhak just had to get used to. But the irresistible melodies vibrating inside his mind propelled and fortified him. And so he refused to give up. At 11, he wrote to the National Symphonic Orchestra, the Israel Philharmonic. I hereby request that you give me an audition to play. I have the following pieces ready. Please answer as soon as possible. Sincerely, Itzhak Perlman. Itzhak waited and waited, but the Philharmonic never responded. Then came an extraordinary opportunity. The world-famous variety television show host, Ed Sullivan, whose show was watched by millions of families each week, traveled to Israel. 
Mr. Sullivan was looking for new acts, so Itzchak auditioned. Itzchak later admitted that he played pretty well for Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan agreed. He invited Itzchak to come to the United States and perform on his show. Knowing just four words of English, mother, father, and good morning, 13-year-old Itzchak boarded a plane with his mother for New York City. On November 2, 1958, Itzchak sat on the stage of the Ed Sullivan Theater, smiled his broad smile, propped his violin under his chin, and began to play. Watching the young, round-faced boy, the audience became mesmerized. Within days, bags full of letters poured into the show, begging for Itzchak to perform again. His life would never again be ordinary. <laughs>